Welcome to the Sex, Money, and Real Estate Podcast, the show for real estate couples about how to close more deals in the bedroom. My name is Nancy Jamison. And I'm Bill Jamison. And each week we deep dive into juicy, intentional, sexy conversations, sharing with you what it takes to create balance in your intimate relationships and your real estate business. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, baby. Hey, hey, what's happening? Uh, you are. Why? How come? Why uh, am I happening? But it's just a, it's a beautiful day and the sun is shining and your eyes are especially twinkly <laughs> this, uh, this afternoon and I appreciate that. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. It's a really a gorgeous day out too. So I'm looking forward to getting outside again and um, I don't know what I can get into. But you're getting something. Figure Pro- out something. Probably something involving dirt. <laughs> Highly possible. Cool, cool. And mm-hmm. our house looks great too. It's uh, it's that Halloween time, and uh, right now in our in our front window, I'm I'm looking at a uh, at a sign that says "Help me." <laughs> With bloody hands. <laughs> yeah, and blood splatter. <laughs> so gross and cool at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. no, we love Halloween. We're very we get into the spirit around here for the holidays for sure. For sure. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. So magic. Do you have any magic this week? And you know, why don't you, uh, you know, let people know what magic is in case they're listening for the first time, mm-hmm. or remind those who need the reminder as well. Well, in that case, let me introduce ourselves. Okay. I am Nancy Jamison. I am Bill Jamison. Hello, Bill. And, and this is the Sex, Money, and Real Estate Podcast. It sure is. It sure is. And so here on the podcast, we talk all about authentic conversations and bold habits and accountability structures in that we believe in the success of your intimate relationship is not only possible, it's the jam. And so jam is uh, J for joy, A for abundance, and M for mature. And so we believe in having joyous, abundant, mature relationships intimately as well as in your already successful real estate business, or maybe you're just starting out in real estate and this is how you put the jam on your real estate business. So the Jamesons believe in the jam. Yes, absolutely. And and the Jamesons believe in you. Yeah. I'm putting jam on that bread. Yes. Bread beaning money. Ooh, all kinds of metaphors in here. So welcome, welcome to the show. And uh, we start our show each week with magic and we define magic as your ability, my ability, to influence myself, others, and life in an empowering way, because there's certainly ways that you can influence life in a disempowering way that would be called enabling. And so we would uh, we would like to offer you a different perspective and in, in highlighting magical um, things that happen in your life, similar to gratitude and appreciation, but just really how you use, how you carry yourself, how you influence others, uh, yourself in life in an empowering way. So, yeah. Yeah, Like, you know, did you give gratitude when you found that penny on the ground? Even if it was tail side up? I sure did. Absolutely. That is abundance right there. I am a money magnet. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Did you give uh, gratitude when you spotted that, uh, that butterfly driving down uh, the road the other day? (laughs) I sure did. Yep. Absolutely. It's just, you know, and did you give gratitude because we got a new refrigerator? Oh my gosh, you got all kinds of magic. <laughs> after, we did. after six, six weeks, weeks and a yes. delay in delivery because of the COVID and all that kind of stuff. Living out of coolers and dry ice trips almost every day. Oh my gosh, yeah, it's six crazy. weeks. It's insane. But yes, we have a brand new refrigerator. <laughs> it's a glorious thing. Yes, it is. Yes, it <laughs> we is. We remarked this morning, oh my gosh, this food is so cold. <laughs> it really was. I was like, wow. Yeah, these blueberries are mm-hmm. freezing. This lettuce is freezing. Mm-hmm. This is funny. Yeah. It and was cool. great. It was. It was awesome. So yes. What other magic do you have, babe? Um, golly. Let's see. I have um that's all magic. Oh, you know what? Some magic also is uh I this is not the ma- well. Maybe there's magic in it. I pulled like uh, I like a, a glute or a hamstring or some connective tissue <laughs> between those two muscle areas. Uh, it's been a while. It's been going on for a while. And um, about three or four weeks ago, I was stretching it out and um, tore it some more. And it was uh, 
It was, uh, I was pretty hobbled there and I haven't run in a long time. Mm-hmm. And so I, I got a couple miles in running, um, on a, you know, pretty flat surface with you and who did we go? Oh, Lucas. Lucas yeah, yeah. Lucas went the other day, which was amazing. The first time I'd really gone out and run like that in a while. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know did you run yesterday no did i run yesterday you ran this morning i did run this morning oh yeah you know what and the, the other thing is so this morning uh i ran a mile which was great because um there's this behind the gym that we work out at is this hill and it's probably a 20 25 percent you know incline sure grade uh where you know where, where it's coming up and I was not able to run that before at all because of the uh, the pull on that. And this morning, I ran a mile back and forth on that thing, and it was uh, it was very <laughs> pleasing, very satisfying, and uh, and man, you know, I've been doing a lot of cardio because I haven't been running, but yet it was still very challenging. I was sweaty when I got done, mm-hmm. so and it was great. Mm-hmm. It was awesome. Yeah, and an indication that your body is healing too, mm-hmm. which is yeah, amazing. I put a lot of intentionality around healing this thing up. So yeah, I'm super heavy. Mm-hmm. All those little, I I googled like you know how to how to rehab a muscle kind of thing, and been doing all those little exercises here and there, and for weeks now, and it's it's working. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Yeah, and you've been getting a massage. You've been getting a ninety minute mm-hmm. massage every week for the last four weeks, I think. Mm, now three or four, yeah. So just the the intentionality behind Ace, and his name is Ace, and Ace is the truth. Let me just tell you. Mm-hmm. So if you're here in Atlanta and you need a masseuse, ooh, ping us and I'll give you his contact information. Or maybe I won't because I don't want him to get so successful. No, that's not true. I'm happy to share. He's amazing. He's definitely a uh, a healer for sure. Yeah, so I think that that is super magical and just really a, a testament to your power in your healing and the intentionality and the care and the love that you have for yourself and this process of the healing. So I appreciate your patience and your diligence and your discipline in healing that part of you and listening to your body. And, and, uh, and again, as evidence, it's, it's working because you ran this morning and you ran on Sunday and um, it's great. It's all great stuff. Yes, for sure. Mm Mm-hmm. How about you? You got any magic? Yes, of course. Lots of magic. And the piece that I will share in this moment is my magic is all around the flexibility in the businesses that we've created. And so between the real estate business and the coaching business and our podcast, we have an abundance of flexibility with the life that we've designed and what that allows us to do is ebb and flow, ebb and flow with COVID, ebb and flow with, with the boys. Now they're back in school full time in person and uh, ebb and flow with homework and schedules and the amount, you know, the volume of homework that they, uh, that they get. And it's really beautiful. It's really beautiful. Mm. I just, I appreciate being able to enjoy our life to the fullest that we're able to enjoy, whether it's again with the boys or ourselves and, or uh, personally, like individually. And um, it's, it's amazing. I mean, it's, it's absolutely amazing just to be able to work for ourselves and, and have that independence. Yes. So. Yes. It's so helpful. I can't even imagine, you know, it's gotta be so hard for, you know, to to for to your magic example about you know parents that are that are working you know nine to five with very uh, rigid schedules. Mm-hmm. You know, so I am I am pleased that uh, and you know I'm pleased that we've been in the business for so long too, so that we know how to um, we have a yeah you know, yeah we know how to flex our schedule a little bit and still still get it all done. Yeah. Yep. Yep. From the prospecting to you know getting people out in the car and you know getting the listings and showings and. Yeah, things under contract and things closed yeah. without yeah. too much and still and still re- and still recording this podcast and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's yeah, amazing. And, mm-hmm. Yes, I love it. So that's my magic for today, and um, and it's awesome because of course it segues into our topic of uh, of discussion today, which I love. So we are today's episode is all about essentially 
not only getting your real estate license, but establishing your real estate career. And mm-hmm. so what what does it take? How do you do that? How do you establish your real estate career? Yes, uh, it's come to our attention that uh, there are some people who listen to this podcast that may want to get into the business, but mm-hmm. really don't know how to. Mm-hmm. You know, so, you know, it seemed like a, a great opportunity for us to hop on the mic here and talk about it a little mm-hmm. bit. Yeah. And then the other thing that we've been getting a lot of also is from our coaching clients. Like, how do you, you know, I have this friend, can you talk to my friend? who's thinking about getting into the business in real estate or um, so I, it, it's, it's definitely uh, it's definitely top of mind for sure. Cause there's, you know, real estate is uh, it's, it's a, it's a great time to get into real estate, which is interesting. <laughs> it, it is definitely mm. very interesting. And yet the, one of the best things about being in real estate is that, well, not only is it essential, but it's essential because people always need a place to live. So regardless if it's a house or a condo or an apartment, somebody always needs a place to live. Yeah, which which what I'm hearing you say is that no matter what the market is or what the scenario is, whether it's um, whether it's COVID or an up market or, you know, a seller's market or a buyer's market or interest rates are high or whatever, people always are going to move. Yeah. Or in, you know, the bowels of the depression or, or the correction or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got it. Cool. Yep. Absolutely. So it is, uh, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely great. So I do want to remind you to stay tuned to the end because we are doing a, uh, a gift. We're giving away a gift for you today. So stay, stay to the end. And you can't fast forward because it's not going to necessarily be right at the end either. And we rigged all this so you can't fast forward. So don't even try. (laughs) Don't even try. Mm -hmm. We got your number. (laughs) Cool. So what does it take to get your license? Oh, what does it take to get your license? You mean like, so are we talking like (laughs) mentally or physically or what are we talking about here? Seriously. Well, I definitely think that it's it's fascinating. The, um, The pros to getting you know, being in real estate are your flexible schedule. Mm -hmm. There's unlimited earning potential. For sure. You know, you can make $100,000, $10,000, a million dollars, $10 million, $100 million, really whatever, unlimited. And then you're your own boss and you have your own business, which is what I was sharing with you guys in the beginning. So for sure, definite pros. Nice. So those cons though, Let's talk about those cons. Go, go for it. Okay, so what I can see as uh, cons for this business are is a flexible schedule, mm. the unlimited earning potential, mm-hmm. <laughs> and you, you, you know, you own your own business, mm-hmm. and you're your own boss, and 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 you own your business. Mm-hmm. So I've got to tell you, Nads, those kind of sound like the same things as the. The pros. Well, it is. <laughs> it's because, you know, you're you're the one who's responsible. Mm-hmm. So it's amazing that that you have the flexibility of your business or oh. the flexibility of your schedule, and yet you're responsible for yourself and, and your discipline and your schedule mm-hmm. <laughs> and making the choices, you know, to get on the phone or to do your prospecting, however that may be, or to leverage your time at, with your business and tools and resources or to even create a schedule Mm -hmm. (laughs) to stick to your schedule. So for sure, yes, it is a beautiful pro to it. You know, the ability to see all of your kids' activities or get your nails done in the middle of the day or go hit a round of golf or go test drive, whatever, or whenever. And at the same time, the con is the flexibility in the schedule because you could lean Towards one way, versus, squirrel. Where's the versus squirrel. the other shiny object, <laughs> squirrel? And then you know, so that goes without saying. It's the same thing with the unlimited earning potential and the fact that you're your own boss with your with your own business. Or in our case, you know, we have three businesses, and so it's it's fascinating when you're your own boss and you're up to you know your own devices. So. Mm-hmm depending on how you how you flow and and again back to your habits that your habits will directly correlate to your earning potential and how you run your business and again that goes back to your schedule so just be mindful just be mindful of that because 
you know, I do remember when we were getting back in the business and you were getting back in the business two decades ago, like, I don't remember having that conversation. Heck no. Like, that was I like... I was so freaking clueless. <laughs> like, it was unbelievable. Like, my mom was even in the business and I was still clueless as to what I was really getting myself into mm. when uh, when we, when I signed up. Yeah. Back yeah. in the back in the day. <laughs> so, yeah, absolutely. Clueless. Nobody had that conversation with me. Mm. Nobody did. Mm. Totally, like, totally assumed that a lot of there were a lot of assumptions made on both sides, you know, from from the brokers to uh, the agents. All kinds of assumptions made. So yeah, I got in. I was way over my head when I got in, for sure. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. So I like having that conversation up front because you know, again, it can assist somebody in making the most educated choice for themselves, or at least precipitate other questions about yeah. getting into the business and yeah. and the accuracy of it. And if you've never been in business on your own, that's it, that's fine and great. And um, I'm going to share something we've shared before is the fact that, you know, you're taking on a lot more responsibility, more than likely. I mean, you may be leaving a job where you had a lot of responsibility and this might be less and that's great. Uh, I feel like the majority of people that get into the business are taking on more responsibility. And that is a uh, that should be a, uh, a bell ringing for you that there are going to be other more opportunities for you to take care of yourself on the other side of things as well. You know, take care of your health and your fitness so that you can take care of your business and your new responsibilities. Mm -hmm. You know, if if you're taking on more responsibility, you're going to need to take on something else on the other side. That's going to, um, you know, fuel that and keep you energized. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And balance it out. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you, it'll burn out. Yep. You know, you'll, you're, it's the typical, it's the typical roller coaster of real estate that you'll experience, which we talked about on another podcast. Mm-hmm. So go check that one out. But it's uh, it, that's a great point. So yes, you are taking on more responsibility as your own business. And then again, you know, if you're the dual career person where you have the job still and you have your real estate business, you like you're literally taking on like, mm-hmm. you, I mean, you've just essentially doubled your, your work, which is, it is amazing and it can be amazing. And just remember that there is a consequence to the, to that. So just to be mindful of, to continue to take care of yourself and to balance the real estate business, to balance your career or your job that you still have. And then, you know, your personal life as well. Yes. So, so it's, it's important if you have a family or, or a partner involved, then, you're going to want to have that conversation with them. Like, Hey, here's the deal. Um, I really want to go for this real estate opportunity and I'm working in my, in the, my job still. So this may be tricky for a minute. Just, you know, are we, are we in agreement that this is the best thing for us? And here's all, here's, here's the top 11 things that Bill and Nancy say that it's going to take to have a successful real estate career and I want to be mindful of our balance and that we're in this uh, agreement together. So have that conversation with them. Mm-hmm. Have that conversation. If you're, if you're single, have that conversation with your family or your set of friends that are your support system, whoever your support system is, just so that there's buy-in. And then, you know, they have an understanding of that you're going for this and they can support you. It's, uh, that's really important too. Absolutely. So... So I want to go through. Uh, I want to go through. Uh, looks like Nancy, you did a little bit of research here on, um, you know, like the top ten or eleven things to get into real estate. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so, you know, and it, this is from our experience and and the, the different conversations that we've had and and just. I mean, we've been in business for twenty years. So between uh, between our business planning and and our experience with our coaching clients and what we've done. Uh, this is basically where we landed with our 11 things. I mean, you can totally trick this list down and make it 20 things if you wanted to, but right, exactly. for the purpose of, and, and it probably won't be less just so you know, yeah. it's going to be, a, this is the minimum. Right yeah, here. exactly. Exactly. So cool. Cool. Awesome. Grab a pen and paper if you want, or listen to this episode over and over <laughs> and over again. Okay, cool. All right, cool. All right. So to get into real estate, there are state requirements, right? There's schooling, there's testing, 
Um, there's license, you know, there's, uh, there's testing and then there's post licensing. Yeah. Pre-licensing right? and post licensing. Right. Thank you. Thank so number you. one is get your real estate license. That's number one. To get in the business. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, you know, it'll, it'll, it's a, Dep- depending on your state, depending on if you find a Groupon for real estate school, if you go online or if you do it in person, which I don't really know if they're doing in person school anymore, but you know, it, it's a varying degree of, of, um, of cost. So it'll be no more than I, well, I will say it's probably going to be between 500 and a thousand bucks to really do all of that between your state tests and your licensing and pre-licensing and post-licensing class. But just really Google, whatever state you're in, Google, what the state requirements are. And then I'm sure there's going to be a top five list of things to do to get into real estate and different schools that are offered in your area specifically and, and the cost. And, you know, here in Georgia, you have to get a, um, a background check as well. So that may be required for your state. I'm sure it probably will be because they don't yeah, nobody messes around. They're particular around. about <laughs> yeah. who they're letting in houses and who yeah, they're not exactly. letting in houses. Right. For sure. Cool. So number two, uh, find a real estate brokerage. Yeah. So obviously there are different types of brokerages. Uh, are you a brokerage that teaches you the business aspect of it or are they a brokerage that really is more of like a salesperson aspect of it? So there's small brokerages and big brokerages. Yeah, mom and, mom and pops and yeah. nationals and everything in and, between, regionals. Yeah, inter- internationals and, and all that kind of stuff. So really just do your research and, and what type of brokerage you want to be in. And for for Bill and I, when we were in... Uh, another brokerage before we moved to our current one, we literally interviewed every brokerage in town because (laughs) company culture was super important. Mm -hmm. So the brokerage type is number one. And then number two is the company culture. And then, you know, of course, all of that is like the energy around what it is that you're involved in, you're in business with. Because as we talk about here on the podcast, environment is everything. So Do you want to be in a billion dollar environment with super successful people? Yes. Sign me up. So just, you know, go and, uh, and tap into the company culture and the energy of the space. And then lastly, around choosing your real estate brokerage is the commission structure. I mean, let's be frank, the purpose of, (laughs) of business is is to make money. Uh Come on, you don't fund. Yeah. The perfect life. And so the commission structure is super important. And what I always tell my coaching clients when they think that the grass is greener on the other side from wherever they are is that's cool, but do the math, right? Like do the math and do the math with the person that is interviewing you and you're interviewing. So what does it look like? Like if there's a $10,000 commission check, what is coming out of the commission check? How much, you know, how much to whom for how long and how much are you uh, taking home? So just have that open, authentic conversation with them. And if they're not willing to have that open, willing, or excuse me, open, authentic conversation with you around your money, then you may want to look at that as a sign that that may not be the company culture that right. you're a part of. So just, you know, just everything is upfront and honest for sure. Nice. Now, number three, join the National Association of Realtors. Yes. That's, and that's, I think that's super important too, because either when you join the NAR, National Association of Realtors, you get the realtor designation versus being known as a salesperson, a salesperson or a real estate agent. And the biggest difference is you, you have to go through a, a, an annual um, code of that, excuse me, code of ethics to where you know, your best business practices. I yep. mean, it, it's important to, to, to have that code of ethics to abide by. And um, well, if you've been in real estate for as long as Bill and I have been in real estate with, you will definitely come into contact with some characters that uh, you can tell are agents and not realtors. Yeah, you'll get tested. So, you will get tested. Yes, absolutely. Whether it's in the contract or during the contingency periods or in the closing, pro- like wherever it is. Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah. And then, so our um, uh, our NAR dues is rolled into our state dues. So again, that's specific by state. Nice. So just Google that. Number four, understand your income and budget. Ooh, oh my goodness. Now you had something down here around emergency fund and 
debt snowball. Yeah. So again, you know, having an understanding that if you're starting your business, it is going to cost you a certain amount of money to start your business. So if that's a couple grand, or if it's five grand, or if it's 10 grand, well, how do you know? So you've got to figure out whatever it is your budget is, including startup costs for real estate, including marketing costs, including business card costs, or your brokerage costs, or, you know, some brokerages will cover things, some won't. So all of that has to roll into the startup cost associated with your real estate business. And then clearly you need to maintain your personal space, your your necessities. So where are you living? Your utilities, your groceries, you know, is there are there kids involved? So then they have their routines that they need to maintain. So you have your you have your budget, which is directly going to correlate to how much income you need to have coming in. And you know, Bill and I subscribe to Dave Ramsey's financial piece and that the financial piece aspect of our podcast is equally important. Emotional, pe- balancing emotional peace and financial peace. And so for the financial piece is having an emergency fund. So whether it's $500 or $1,000, um, that's important as well for those emergencies that that cash money in the house is, it's important. And then of course, you know, baby step number two is to begin to debt snowball. So perhaps you're utilizing that income to pay off your credit card debt or or some other debt. Then you can think about moving from the career in the real estate business to simply the real estate business. Or if you don't have that other career, then, you know, just funnel that extra cash into the debt snowball. But we have another podcast about that as well. So go... (laughs) Go go search that, but it is very uh, very very important to understand your um, your economic model. Yep. Number five, make a business plan. Mm-hmm. So you're saying have like a minimum of three legs to your business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what do you mean by legs to your business? Well, it's a it's the what are the types of prospecting that you are doing that fortifies and stabilizes your goal. So when you have a business plan, you're going to establish whatever your goal is for the year. So is it number of units or is it uh, GCI, gross commissions earned? In other words, how much money you're gonna make? It could be referrals. You know, my goal is 50 referrals this year. So if it's 12 units, then what does it look like to make or close 12 units? Well, I'm gonna... um, prospect my database. Mm -hmm. So I have database. I'm going to, um, maybe work your farm. Yeah. If, if there is a small farm and if you, and if you don't know what these terms are yet, you will, as you do your research Mm -hmm. and get a mentor to help you identify what your strengths are. Yes. And so the, so, so the legs of the business are identified as each one of, uh, the way that you do your business. So, our particular legs are, so we have a geographical farm, we have uh, internet presence, and then our database. So our database is 87% of our, of our real estate business. So, and that's just our real estate business. But the, the business plan covers all of that. So the business plan covers how you're going to lead generate, your income, if there's any tools or leverage, marketing, uh, things like that. So the business plan again is is for the for the year, and we are in business planning season. Like this is when Bill and I start business planning for twenty twenty one, and then we'll have all of that wrapped up by the end of November. And then this way, December rolls into Janu- January, and we don't skip a beat. We just keep it humming. Number six is uh, you led right in number six with develop a marketing plan. Mm-hmm. So the marketing plan supports how you're going to do your business. And what does that look like? You know, so it, it can be, it's, it's prospecting and it's marketing. It's lead generating and again, the, the marketing aspect of it. So marketing could be direct mail campaigns. It can be anything that is offline. I separated the two. So, mm-hmm. so six is your marketing plan offline and then seven is your marketing plan Build, online or building your online, your online presence. presence, right? Yeah. And ultimately, that's that's your leverage point. So if you're doing Facebook or if you're doing Twitter or Instagram or your website or your vlogging or blogging or any of those things, they all work. Yep. The, the key to the marketing piece, really, as with anything, is consistency. 
Consistency is king. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. And then number eight, which I alluded to uh, a little bit ago, was uh, find a mentor. Yes. And so this is really, this is, this is big. So it's find a mentor, hire a coach, and partner with a peer. And so your mentor is somebody that's in the business that is doing a business that you may want to do. So if you're a million dollar producer, find a mentor at like, four or five million dollars if you're at four or five then find somebody who is at eight or ten if you're at ten then find somebody who's doing 15 to 18 and so on and so forth you don't want to make it too big of a jump because there's there's processes and systems and resources that you need to put in place at each one of those points so just go slightly beyond just just i mean just double it. But I would not go any more than doubling it. And doubling it is really pushing it, honestly. So the mentorship is a two-way street. So if you're finding somebody to mentor, then, you know, there's there needs to be a win-win created. So it's like your win for you is that you're getting mentored by somebody who is in business where you want to be in business. And so what's in it for them? And so the win for them at that point may be you're hosting open houses for them or you're... Um, you know, just doing different ministerial duties that really assist them with their leverage as well. But just, you know, have that conversation with whomever your mentor is about what the win-win is for them. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, number nine uh, is... Uh, well, I do want to touch on hiring a coach first. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so hiring a coach. I mean, my gosh. I mean, we, we you know, we talk about this a lot as well is you have a coach in each one of your areas. Oh, yes. You know, absolutely. because you because they see your blind spots mm -hmm. and you're hiring them. So you're financially engaged in them. And so you've got skin in the game. Yes. So there's a tendency to, you know, like really, really listen to them and, 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 um, and buy into the feedback that they're giving you so that you move in a very powerful way. And then your partnership with your peer, somebody who's in it with you, somebody who's just like in the trenches with you in the day to day, maybe it's an accountability partner or you lead generate, or maybe you're practicing your listing script, or maybe you're writing notes together to your database or whatever that may be. Just find somebody, find a buddy inside your office or inside just somewhere within real estate that is in or at right around the same level with you that you can really like commiserate with and, and hold each other accountable and assist with. It's uh, yeah, super so important. It's not your partner in crime. It's your partner in success. Yes, absolutely. For cool. sure. All right, what about number nine? Uh, number nine, we have down as uh, host open houses. Ooh. Like all of them. Yes. Every day. No, not every day. <laughs> but in the beginning, it's going to feel like every day. Because mm -hmm. that is the most, that is the quickest, fastest way to get an education and build your database and uh, and, and partner up with somebody that is uh, doing it on a different level than you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So really hone in on that open house system. I mean, just Google open house system. There, there are so many different tips and, and tricks and resources for you to really sink your teeth into. You can really knock an open house out of the park. And yes, open houses are still alive and thriving right now for sure. I mean, we had the last open house we had a couple weeks ago, we had like 50 people come mm -hmm. through and, you know, multiple offers and the houses. Anyway, they're, they're doing, they're, they're definitely alive and thriving. So yes, St uh, systematize, stabilize, and do it often, mm -hmm. every once a week, at least in the beginning. Yeah, even twice a week, a Saturday and a Sunday, or, or two a Thursday on, and a Sunday, or I mean, do, do two like on or hour. do two on Sunday. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, do one to three and three to five if you yep. can get them close enough to enough like, together or yep. whatever. So absolutely. Yep. Yep. Cool. And then um, number ten, continue to be, continue to learn. Yes. Absolutely. Continuous so learning. continuous learning, education. I mean, you know, be familiar with the number of hours that you need to uphold your license and then go to extra classes. Mm -hmm. There are some amazing classes out there, amazing classes about architecture, classes about appraisals and how to really bolster your appraisal, classes about all kinds of stuff. You can, you know, credit, increasing your credit score, um, you know, the ins and outs of, of bankruptcy, the ins and outs of the inspection process. I mean, really amazing classes that you can 
uh, really sink your teeth into mm-hmm. become educated and really help out your your clients. I mean, it's it's about performing and and uh, giving white glove service to your to your clients. So just knock their socks off by knowing a lot of stuff. And you know, in the beginning, <laughs> if you you you're doing your database and you're going to class, mm-hmm. so class can include going to other inspections other agents inspections and learning all about the inspection process you you can go to other appraisals and like talk with the appraiser there is all kinds of stuff that you can do to educate yourself so mm-hmm. continuous learning continuous learning go sit next to your closing attorney for 3 hours and mm-hmm. look at what they do behind the scenes behind that process or go sit next to your lender and look at what they do behind the scenes that you may not even know about and just have them take you through the process and maybe you buy them lunch or something like that as a as a thank you. But all kinds of things to learn. Nice. And number 11, build and maintain relationships. I mean... Jeez, we could do a whole podcast about this. Yes. Referrals, referral system. Um, you know, remember that uh, the architecture and, exa- uh, and everything is, is awesome. But, you know, you're... you're you're in a sales position now. Yes, you are. Super sales position. So you've got a you, you know, you're in a you're in a process to where you are selling and you're making them aware of things at the at the same time. So you are building the relationship with them through the process of selling. Mm-hmm. And go ahead. I think what I was actually I'm looking at my note here. I think what I was really trying to say is yes, houses are cool. Architecture is cool. The whole process of selling a house is cool. But at the end of the day, um, you know, you got to build and maintain relationships. Mm -hmm. And then to your point, the referral systems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, if we're 87% referral, Mm -hmm. we're giving them, we're giving them ourselves. We're a hundred percent present with them. We're sharing with them the pros and cons of the house. And sometimes we are recommending that they don't necessarily buy this house. Yeah, absolutely. You know. you know, and at the end of the day, um, you are in a sales position. So these, these, these recommendations, these referrals, these relationships with, with your, with your peeps are the most important thing. Mm-hmm. So retain your client base, retaining your client base is job number one and building it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Consistency with the relationship. I mean, you know, you spent years building Mm -hmm. relationships with people and and you know our folks come back to us because we stay in touch with them decades are the first client that bill ever sold a house to that's right comes back to us and says hey i want you to sell my house because i'm moving to indiana to be with my mom and uh golly and how long had it been between well you sold him you sold him a few houses a couple of houses yeah and then we sold the one and then we sold the last one. But yeah. it was just, it's just a testament to, and you have a ton of stories like that. Yeah, absolutely. But it's, uh, it's, it's super important. And it's because of the consistency, whether it's the postcards or the phone calls or the handwritten notes or the Popeye gifts that we do. Cause we are, we are super corny guys with our like little Popeye gifts and uh, birthday cards, anniversary cards, home anniversary cards. We send out comparative market analysis on their on their home anniversary. We have client appreciation parties. Well, except for this year, we had to cancel them all, which I'm kind of bummed at. But in any event, <laughs> there is <laughs> yes, I get it. <laughs> there's there's lots of different ways that you can stay in touch with your people, and it's super important to stay in touch with your people for the purpose of creating that referral based business. Which again is it is bulletproof. Your referral based business is bulletproof. Yeah, it'll survive any market condition, you know, interest rates, the buyer's market, seller's market. COVID. COVID. <laughs> all of it. For sure. Uh-huh. For sure. Absolutely. So mm-hmm. cool, cool. That is the eleven. The eleven recommendations to uh for you to get into real estate and how to set up your real estate business. Get your real estate license, find a brokerage. Join an associate, the uh, National Association of Realtors, understand your budget, make a business plan, and then develop a, bar- a marketing plan, build your online presence, find a mentor and a coach, host open houses, be a continuous learner, 
and build and maintain those relationships. Yes. That's the 11. Woo. Awesome. That's, that's hot. Tell them about our gift. We have a gift for you guys. This is, uh, this is thank you for listening to the end and not skipping forward. Uh, our, our gift to you this week is um, a 30 minute, no obligation, real talk. And I'm, I'm kind of like, recording quoting. You know, real talk yeah <laughs> conversation where you know we're just we're happy to have a discussion with you and answer any questions concern you know or questions or concerns uh not covered in the podcast on you know and we'll talk about anything from sex money and real estate and maybe a little beyond mm -hmm. but uh all if you, <laughs> yeah all of it and if you have any uh if you have anything for us that you want to talk about that hasn't been covered or you think you want us to cover reach out and let's schedule a time to, to chat and uh, it could be about real estate again. It could be about sex and relationships. Uh, it can be about money. Mm -hmm. So know? yeah, 30 minute coaching call with us. Whether, or it could be with Bill or it could be with me or it could, it could be, be with both, both of us. us. Right. Your call. And so wherever you live, whatever you do, you know, call, text, DM us, uh, set up an appointment to chat and we'd be honored to support you in any way we can. Mm -hmm. Our gift to you. Awesome. Come one, come all. Do <laughs> you want to tell them where we are? At Sex Money Real Estate. That's our Instagram. Oh, yeah. And we're on Facebook at Sex Money and Real Estate as well. And on Facebook at Love Money and Real Estate. Yeah, that's the well. private group. Go that's for the, it. Yeah. Yeah, join that too. Because that's not going to be free for too much longer. Exactly. Cool, cool. Anything? Awesome. Are we anywhere else? Oh, gosh. But yeah. I mean, Gmail? all we need to do is We have a Gmail Google account, us. right? Yes. Sex Money and, <laughs> and Real Estate. At gmail.com. Boom. Yes, dear. All right. That's it for now. Awesome. Love goes out. Let us know if you have any questions about this, uh, this or anything else. Love your comments. And we'll talk to you soon. Yes. Bye. Bye for now. Wow. What a show. Thank you so much for listening. If you're inspired, we ask that you share the podcast with one person and subscribe and follow our show. I'm Nancy Jameson. And I'm Bill Jameson. And remember, it's a great life. Woo! <laughs> Quick note about the Sex, Money, and Real Estate podcast. We are not doctors or licensed therapists. We are a joyous, abundant, and mature couple passionately sharing our story of growth around sex, money, and real estate. Our thoughts, opinions, and beliefs are our own, so please consult your doctor, healthcare provider, or your broker regarding any questions or issues you have related to your physical or mental health or specific state laws regarding your real estate business.